Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutritional advice. Um, it's the 17th of January and that means we're coming up uh, to 20 days past the new year. Uh, and that means those people that have made a, a New Year's resolution to lose uh, weight uh, will be around 20 days uh, into their program. Now, uh, most people uh, that decide that they need to lose weight go down, uh, uh, they go down the route of trying to cut their calories uh, and often performing uh, aerobic exercise as well, uh, which uh, often ne necessitates joining a gym. Um, after around 20 days, what these people, uh, maybe it's yourself uh, included, will be experiencing is that you will find that the weight that you are losing uh, is starting to tail off uh, and you are becoming, uh, it's becoming the law of diminishing returns. Most diets will cause weight loss initially uh, and then after uh, around about a month you'll find uh, that the weight stops coming off. What you will also found if you, uh, if you analysed your body composition is that uh, a lot of the weight uh, that you will have lost will have been skeletal muscle. Uh, in fact studies show that uh, initially uh, around about 50% of the weight uh, that is lost in low calorie diets, uh, particularly uh, if no exercise is performed, uh, can be uh, skeletal muscle. Uh, and that is detrimental because uh, it will lower your resting metabolic rate. Uh, and this is problematic because uh, when uh, a maintenance level uh, of calories are, are recommenced, uh, the, uh, the risk of gaining uh, the weight back uh, is increased uh, uh, significantly. Uh, and the general problem with these kinds of diets is that when the weight is lost, it is in the form of both skeletal muscle uh, and fat, uh, usually about a 50% uh, uh, ratio of both. Um, when um, the uh, weight is put back on, the weight is, is invariably just as fat. So you go through these periods of losing weight uh, in terms of uh, skeletal muscle and fat, and then a period of gaining the fat back. And what this causes over time uh, is a deterioration in your body composition and you get fatter. Um, Particularly those people uh, that are dieting every year, every January, they make uh, the same uh, New Year's resolution to lose weight. They follow the same path. They end up with the same results. This video is really aimed at those types of people. Um, what I would suggest is that the first thing you need to do is stop cutting your calories. You need to do this immediately. Uh, cutting your calories when you are uh, particularly considerably overweight uh, is detrimental to the health. Losing skeletal muscle is also detrimental to the health and increases the risk of mortality uh, significantly. Um, cutting calories is not the way to lose weight, uh, particularly if you don't change your eating habits. Um, Weight loss diets, uh, all of them generally cause a certain amount of weight loss because uh, they tend to cut out the foods that are causing uh, the weight gain. Uh, it's it's imp almost impossible, obviously, to continue to consume the same levels of sugar, fructose, trans fatty acids if you cut your calories. Uh, and really, the weight loss that you experience uh, when you're on a low calorie diet is caused by uh, a reduction in the consumption of these types of foods. And if we look at studies that um, eliminate these types of foods but don't restrict calories, we see that what happens is that those people lose weight as well. In other words, it's not the cutting of calories that is causing you to lose weight. It's the removal of these foods that are obesogenic uh, and these obesogenic foods fructose uh, sucrose trans fatty acids all the processed foods contain these metabolic poisons uh, these are the foods that cause you to gain weight and when you remove them from your diet uh, you lose weight now another thing to mention to uh, the people that are on these low calorie diets uh, if you have been on them uh, more than once and you've uh, you've had a deterioration in your body composition uh, what i would suggest is that you uh, really need to perform some kind of resistance training um, you will have a, a reduced amount of skeletal muscle uh, the studies now show that when you go on these types of diets the reduction uh, in the skeletal muscle uh, is permanent uh, semi-permanent it can last for decades uh, unless some form of resistance training is performed to rebuild that muscle. Uh, this is of paramount importance because if you ever want to return your metabolism to a healthy state, you need to return your skeletal muscle to its normal uh, homeostatic point. And to do that, you need to consume more protein to provide yourself with the nitrogen to build the muscle, and you also need to perform resistance training. So 
those people that have gone down the low calorie aerobic exercise route uh, and they find that it's not successful perhaps you've done it every year for the last 10 years perhaps your body composition is deteriorating all the time and you're not really getting anything out of these diets all the time you fail you're blaming yourself because you just didn't stick to the diet you didn't do enough exercise next time you'll cut calories further uh, really you need to redress uh, the problems of uh, your your route uh, to see that you're not actually uh, doing anything helpful at all to improve your body composition what you need to do is you need to eat a normal amount of calories your body will tell you when you're full you need to eat so that you don't get hungry being hungry uh, when you're trying to lose body fat uh, is a big no-no because it causes it increases the risk of you eating the wrong types of food you need to eat enough food so you don't feel hungry but that food needs to be of very high quality it needs to contain none of the types of foods that you find in the western diet which are processed and refined it needs to be based on whole grains it needs to be based on good protein sources it needs to be based on plant foods it needs to be based on foods that contain micronutrients and fiber fruits vegetables uh, all a range of plant foods it needs to eliminate sugar it needs to eliminate trans fatty acids which are uh, both metabolic poisons uh, and any uh, reg uh, exercise uh, needs to really be uh, resistance training because if you've gone through these cycles of dieting you will almost certainly have a damaged resting metabolic rate and you can't hope to lose the body fat that you want to until you redress that problem so you will need to perform some kind of resistance training um, most people shy away from resistance training when they try and lose weight and they jump straight on an exercise bike or a treadmill it's exactly the wrong thing to do uh, that just exacerbates uh, the problem because aerobic exercise particularly long periods of it when you have uh, not, uh, insufficient energy and insufficient protein in your diet is a catabolic process and it will deteriorate your skeletal muscle um, mass uh, significantly so you need to avoid that type of exercise and you need to uh, build uh, skeletal muscle by performing resistance training once you have a, a metabolism that's working and you've built some skeletal muscle and you've lost some body fat yes you can perform aerobic exercise just don't overdo it you don't need to perform hours of it really aerobic exercise should be there to improve your cardiovascular system uh, and keep you healthy uh, it's not really unless it's your sport necessary to perform this to uh, high, very high intensities over very long durations um, a couple of times a week as well as all of the uh, of the normal cardiovascular exercise you get during your everyday living is fine for most people uh, in fact too much cardiovascular exercise uh, can increase oxidative stress in the body and can actually be damaging so you need to limit your aerobic exercise so what's the take-home message from this well if you're one of those people that's uh, continually dieting you're continually getting nowhere in fact maybe even your body composition uh, is deteriorating what you have to realize is that successful long-term weight loss doesn't come from dieting it doesn't come from performing uh, ex aerobic exercise like a hamster on a wheel it comes from uh, changing your lifestyle so that your food sources are of high quality uh, the key to keeping yourself lean is to eat high quality foods and I can't emphasize this enough uh, even sm uh, short periods of, of consuming Western foods cause uh, significant uh, deteriorations uh, in your metabolic pathways uh, and, and these uh, Western foods are now being linked increasingly to uh, the formation of most uh, diets that we see in the uh, most uh, uh, diseases we see in the West such as obesity cardiovascular disease type 2 diabetes there's a whole raft of them and uh, they tend to be uh, a particularly uh, a high prevalence in uh, western nations and that's because those people eat refined foods they eat processed foods so what i would suggest you do if you want to lose weight have a look at your diet go on my website go on other websites and find out what high quality foods are try and find sources of those foods and consume them regularly if you do that you'll find you don't need to diet you don't need to perform aerobic exercise those people have damaged their metabolism through this these types of periods of dieting they need to perform some kind of resistance training but the key to all this is a high quality diet the key to all this is avoiding western foods particularly sugar trans fatty acids and all the other metabolic poisons that are in processed and refined foods 
and if you can stop putting those refined processed foods uh, into your mouth and consuming them you'll find that weight loss comes naturally you don't need to worry about what you eat you don't need to worry about exercise your body will regulate your own exercise levels uh, your own activity levels and your own uh, appetite uh, perfectly naturally and you'll be able to maintain uh, your normal homeostatic uh, body weight